um, for the property perimeter adjacent to residential properties and uh, that has a specific number of trees that are supposed to count, uh, be planted towards that. In this case, there's really not a place that trees could be planted with the utilities and the site being so constrained uh, it would be difficult to fit almost anything on the site um, if the, the trees were moved far, much farther south. So uh, due to that and the fact that there is currently a carport along the majority of the property line adjacent to the residential, um, on the residential side uh, that would block, help also block the view uh, between the residential and the new bank. Um, staff is suggesting that with that and the solid fence that will be constructed between the two properties, shrubs would be adequate to meet the landscaping requirement there. Uh, and the regulations do allow for uh, the community development director to um, allow uh, different landscaping along the perimeter when there is a solid fence there. Uh, the building elevations, uh, staff is recommending that the colors be changed to better coordinate with the existing buildings. Uh, as you can see in the image, the, there are photographs of the two existing buildings on the right side of the screen. On the left side of the screen, um, at the top, is the Harvest Bank elevations with the colors that they've proposed. Um, and then beneath that, staff is sort of roughly drawn over with colors that would coordinate with the existing buildings. Um, this would go along with uh, principle nine harmony from the architectural design requirement, uh, which required that buildings within the same preliminary plat area um, would coordinate color and uh, architectural details and building materials. Um, the, it's not shown on the screen here, but the elevations also indicate marketing banners on three sides of the building. Uh, there's a question as to whether these would uh, be considered temporary or permanent signs. Uh, if there's signage up uh, consistently throughout the year, uh, staff maintains that those would be permanent signs. Um, just changing out the banner doesn't make it a different sign. Uh, the, uh, if they were, uh, if there was downtime to have those meet the definition of temporary, uh, staff wants to know how the structures that are actually attached to the building that uh, would have these signs on them, uh, how that would look when they were in their signs up. And that information was not yet provided. Um, so I've sort of quickly drawn a, a picture of uh, Arbor Bank at night time to this is with um, the colors proposed by Arbor um, and the red LED lighting proposed by Arbor uh, to give an idea of how that might look. Uh, this does not give any indication of the house lighting that's shown on the floor plan. Uh, but staff is suggesting that the red LED band would not be um, something that should be approved for this particular location. Uh, it is something that has been approved um, in recent years for Burger King and Quick Trip for those projects. Um, but those projects are in more um, typical suburban uh, areas, whereas this is adjacent to the historic downtown district. Uh, and so staff does not believe that the red LED lighting would be appropriate there. The final plat would divide the two lots um, a little bit differently than they currently are. There's no gain or loss of lot if there's currently two parcels and we would uh, end up with two parcels with approval of the plot. Um, the bank would have the larger lot with the access easement for the office building uh, on the smaller lot. Uh, staff does recommend approval of both the final development plan and the final plot with stipulation. Um, one that the applicant most likely does not agree with would be the um, stipulation B on the final development plan regarding um, eliminating the red and eliminating the architectural band. <laughs> Questions for staff. Which one of the recommended stipulations? 
conditions deals with the elevations. I didn't see that on the recommendations. Um, dealing with the color change yes. for the materials, um, that was not stipulated. That does sure. recommend no. that it coordinate, but you can certainly add a stipulation to that. Any additional discussions? <clears throat> the red LED lighting. Does that does that go against the design standards, or is that kind of open to interpretation? Uh, the design standards don't specifically address LED light banding. Um, the draft fine regulations that we looked at earlier this year had a section um, that addressed that and said that it should not be. Uh, basically said it's not allowed unless it's approved by the Planning Commission as part of an overall architectural thing for the development. In this case, you have two existing buildings that don't have it, so I wouldn't think that it would be approved as a thing for this particular development. Again, that is just the draft regulation. So. And I apologize, but could you talk about the tree? The tree, and then I think this is the northwest corner. Can you talk about that just Again. Yeah, um, looking on the screen, the, the large green circle at the upper left mm -hmm. is the tree we're talking about. Um, there is a power pole that is currently located in a spot that would be right directly in the middle of that driveway that exits on the second one. Okay. So that power pole has got to move either north or south. Um, my understanding from speaking at with uh, staff at Gardner Energy is that um, it would be less expensive to move that pole to the north and take out the tree than it would be to move the pole to the south. I don't fully understand the, the reason behind that, um, but that was what I was told by them. Um, the estimate of the cost difference, I don't recall off the top of my head, but it was maybe in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars somewhere um, in planning staff's opinion that tree has a value that would be more than that. Um, we've done a lot of uh, planning studies and things on the, the value of trees and people overlook the fact that there's a monetary value that goes along with that because mostly we think of them as just an aesthetic um, value but they do a lot for the environment or for shading and for they serve a lot of different purposes that people don't usually actually take the time to figure out the monetary value. So an older tree, granted it's more towards the end of its lifespan, but because it's <coughs> a large tree, uh, it would have a pretty high value. Okay. But I do not know that, I, do, I don't know the value of it. Um, I'm speculating that it would be more than the cost of that. Thank you. And this is an existing pole that needs to be used? Correct. Yeah, the, the alley, um, the new driveway on the Sycamore would line up with the alley across the street. Uh, but because it's wider, the way it comes out, there's a power pole that, from the line that runs down the alley on the other side, and then the line that comes up Sycamore, um, that's where it crosses there. I don't know if you can see exactly, but the, the new driveway would be there um, right across the alley. You can kind of see on the aerial photo, there's a pole right there. And that would actually be right in the middle of the new alley. So the south lane of the exit is what lines up with the alley. across the street on the alley. Yeah, it goes down the alley. Is this, um, this is a power line? Yes. So the overhead power lines run um, all the way up Sycamore Street, and then they run uh, down the alley. Uh, then there's some underground power along the north 